everybody. I'm Heather. I'm Kimmy. And this is Because We Can Farms. We are best friends from our Army days of 30 years. And we are building on an off-grid property up here in northern Idaho. We're building a tiny house shipping container. Um, treehouse. Treehouse, yeah. So we're completely off-grid and we've been surviving with a gas generator for the last three years. And today we are lucky enough to be sponsored by Blue Eddy. They sent us the AC 200P portable power station to try here on our build. We are so excited. It has been a game changer. So we're going to start off talking about how to charge the Blue Eddy. So there are five ways to power this thing. Uh, one is solar, vehicle, uh, battery, and then you can do like a dual charge where you can charge with solar and battery at the same time. And also the generator, that's basically what we use 100% right now to charge it exactly. because our solar is not hooked up. But this summer we're adding a wind turbine and a whole solar panel array. So we're really excited to be able to use that and, and not have to use our gas generator hardly at all. I know. One of the things that we're actually really looking forward to being able to use the AC 200P portable power station is to actually power the entire tiny house. Um, I'm going to put a description below with some uh, links to some other channels that have actually done that. So we're really excited that that is something that we would be able to do with this. People also charge their full RVs with them too. So that's pretty cool. Super exciting. So when you get your uh, Blue Eddy, when it comes in the mail, it's boxed up really nice. It's very secure. Um, I was really impressed with how we received it, but we want to show you the things that it came with. We so got the power station, we got the uh, AC adapter charging cable, and this is 411.6 watts. So this will charge actually very quickly. It will charge the unit very quickly. And then we have the MC4 uh, solar charging cable this and then we have the car charging cable it's this one and the xt90 aviator plug yeah and this plugs in right here so blue to blue and then what you what this is for is so that you can then plug in these other um cords that you then can plug in to actually do your charging we have only used the ac adapter because we don't have our solar set up so we're really excited to get to try that but that's basically what came with this when we got it correct yeah so let's see um we, we pulled out some of the products that we've been using we are just building now we're actually pulling our electric uh, electrical wires um, right now but we run our lights for filming we charge all of our stuff we run our vacuum cleaners. We have a big shop vac and we have a smaller vacuum. So we're going to start plugging things in. We have this charged up to a hundred percent so we can see how many things we can run on it. Cause I know that's really important. Um, and then also how long this lasts. So we actually have not run it down yet. Now, and it, it does have a little bit that has gone down. It is now at 98%, but that's just because we are using a light so that you guys can see us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's actually bring them close in and show them the, the touch screen. Okay, so we already have the AC on because that's what we have our lights plugged into. This gives you um, the percentage of what's being used, how much is actually you have available to you. So if you're wanting to plug in your DC side, which is this side of your unit, and then this side is your AC side, there are six plugins available. So you can plug six different things in, and they have these really great dust covers, which we need here on our build because it's very dusty. Um, and you have your USB a USB port here, a USB port here. Um, this is a 60 watt, so this is a C, your your C, what's that called, Kimmy? C port. Your C port. And that's not like boating. <laughs> this is where you plug in with your car charger. Um, nope, I'm sorry, that's wrong. This is where you plug in, it's like a cigarette lighter. So we have a fan that we're actually going to plug into that. So that's pretty cool. And then this is your 12 volt output. I don't even know what we would plug into that. 
So if we want to use this side, we just push our DC and then we push yes and that turns that on. And when it's highlighted, you know that it's on. And then this over here will run and tell you. So um, this will tell you the outage of voltage of what's going on on your on your DC. And then our back button is up here. It's very um, touch sensitive, so you don't even have to push very hard on it at all. This gives you your wattage of coming in. So when you're charging it, it gives you your input, um, how much input's coming in there. We're not charging it right now. Um, what else do we need? This is our faults button. So if you have any faults, we've been using the heck out of this. So as you can see, we have some faults on there. So I'm back to our home page. I'm gonna go to settings. And this is telling us Gives you all of your settings, which you can change out. You can do your language, you can set buzzers, you can adjust your um, date and time and your time settings. And your language. And your language. Let's see. This gives you your product info, your inverter and charger info, your maintenance and your fault history. So it's really easy to use. I was very intimidated by this because I, I've never used anything like this before. So I'm really pleased. I give it a five star on easy usability because we did not read the directions. We just started using it and it really is self-explanatory. Yeah. Don't so be intimidated uh, by this because even if you're not a big techie like we are not, we've been able to use this really uh, quickly and, and it's just seamless. One of my favorite things on this unit is here on the top, they have the wireless chargers. So you literally put your phone on there and you hit the, the DC on, which it's already on, and then it just starts charging. Look at that. So the only thing that we've had a problem with on that is our actual recording phone has, um, we have to take, take the cover off for some reason with that particular cover protector it doesn't like to charge on this so if your phone if you set your phone down on it and it doesn't charge and you have a protector on your phone take that off and set it on so that's what we have to do for that one but if we don't want to do that then we can just plug it in here and charge it with with our wires <laughs> you can plug in 2000 watts into this um, and run 2000 watts on it. And then it has a, um, I think it's a 2400 surge on it. So let's see all the things that we can plug in. I have a, um, a little fan and I'm doing an electric blanket. It works really well. Looks like it's high. It's six, running six. <laughs> Great. I'm going to pop in my electric blanket, which comes in handy during the winter for sure. And on high, this is pulling 107 watts. Oh, that's not much at all. That's great. I thought it would be way more. Me too. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my phone which as you saw, it's at like 98%, so. <laughs> and here I'm gonna plug in our DeWalt battery charger because we use this thing constantly, so we have to keep these charged. And we have a total of 100, correction, 96 watts right now. Well, it's not very much at all. It's still on. One of the other things that we use, and it usually gets the dogs barking, is the vacuum cleaner. So let's plug that in. AC output. Crazy. How about the DC side? 
The DC side is still only at five. It's still only at five with yeah. the phone and the fan in. Yep. Let's check out this. Uh, and when you when you get that guy plugged in, I'll turn back on the the vacuum cleaner. It's just really loud. Okay. And I would have to say one of the other things that we really use is our air fryer. Let's see how many watts that actually pulls. Pop the air fryer right here. There we go. It's going. 1500 watts. Okay, now let's turn all the rest of our stuff on. So 1500 watts with just the air fryer and the other stuff. Four was the highest so and we didn't trip it so that gives a little bit of room for these things to surge I think you have to hit the 2400 in order for it to go but we have all six plugs plugged in plus the phone charger now obviously these run separately but it's still even though this is the DC side and that's the AC side you still don't want to go over much over the 2000 um, watts. One of the biggest things that we use the most besides our power tools and charging our stuff is we edit all of our videos using this since we have gotten it. We do not have to turn on the generator and we can just plug in and we both have our computers going and editing and downloading and running our um, editing programs and stuff and have had no problems with that. We want to charge that. Put those in and see how much they take. Absolutely. Right now it's at 14.49, just... And we're only down to 94%. So we didn't leave those running for a really long time because it's just really loud. In fact, I'm sure that's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and we could probably, we could probably, turn off the probably stop cooking. <laughs> yeah, just done. So... So far, you can see how many things we can actually run at a time, and we could have ran them for quite a while because we're only, we've only dropped down a few percentage uh, marks for our battery on this. So let's get our computers, hook those in, turn those on, and see how much power that takes. Okay, so we are at, still at 131. Nice. 32, 83, 59, 72, 72. That's awesome. So what's been really cool is when I'm looking at things to purchase for the tiny house, our dishwasher, our on-demand hot water heater, I'm able to look at how many watts it takes to run that particular thing and then know whether or not this will actually run it because you don't want to go over 2,000 watts. So that's really helped us with our build because, like I said, we really want to be able to use um, this to be able to run the tiny house. In the winter time, we don't get as much sun up here in northern Idaho, so we won't be pulling as much from our solar system once we get that set up, but we will have the wind turbine, which will be really exciting to be able to keep this charged and run everything. And once we get that up and going, we can do another review of this to show you guys how great that charges this up as well. One of the things that we did not plug in is our TV because we actually don't use it hardly at all. But you definitely have enough power to be able to plug this in, watch a movie, also plug in your DVD player or anything like that if that's what you're going to use, and watch a movie in the evening. So um, we just haven't used it for that yet. So <laughs> In the near future. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, as I was talking about different things that you can plug into it, um, we started trying to figure out a bunch of things and how long it would actually take to run this out of energy. I started uh, looking at things like coffee makers which would take an hour and a half, uh, electric grill an hour and a half, air conditioner one to four hours depending which is a 5,000 BTU. We got a camera full frame 71,000 raw photos, wow. um, a car fridge which is a 70 watt for 20 hours and then uh, last but not least uh, something that a lot of people uh, would use this for is a CPAP machine um, especially if power goes out and you have this in a in a setting where you're going to need that. Um, 30 to 40 hours for 40 watts. Yeah, and then being able to have the multiple different ways to charge it, 
you know, in an emergency situation, like that would definitely be an emergency um, thing that you really need to have plugged in. So you would be able to have multiple different ways to keep this charged so that you can keep something like that running. Yeah. We, this has been an absolute game changer for us here on our build. Um, you know, it's kind of considered a camping model or one of the smaller models, but um, for us, it has ran everything that we've needed it to run. And one of the big things is we are using a third less gasoline to run the generator because we just charged this. And at the same time, we're charging the RV batteries. And then we use this for the rest of the day and we don't have to run the generator anymore. So even if you're on a build like this and you're not camping and you're trying to get some power to run your power tools or charge your batteries, because that was a really big yeah. problem for us yeah. was getting the batteries charged on our uh, battery pack powered uh, tools. Um, this is excellent for that. We also thought of something just today that, that this can do that we didn't even think about and it's a heat. So it's gonna save us money on propane because we use a propane little buddy heater and you can actually plug in it in a portable plug-in heater and use this for that as well. And that's amazing because at this time of the year in the spring, you just wake up and it's a little chilly and you'd like to do a little bit of heat, but you don't really wanna start the wood stove. So that was really exciting to learn that this thing could run that. So we are going to continue to be using this and doing our build and finishing out our tiny house. I hope that you want to follow the journey and we will constantly be putting this thing to the test and we'll absolutely let you know where it does and does not work. So make sure that you subscribe and you hit that bell notification button. Give us a thumbs up on your way out and leave us a comment how you think you would actually use um, this power station. Talk to you guys later. Bye.